In workshop four, we're going to look at simulating and reviewing the results of our network. We're going to update our channel definition, set up the RON object, run the simulation, and we're going to view the simulation results. We're going to explore the grids, graphs, and themes, and we're going to look at exporting the results out of ICM. Firstly, we're going to update the channel definition of our imported channels. By default, the imported channel links will have a minimum of five computational nodes per link when the engine is performing the model calculations. This is based on global default simulation parameters chosen for optimum accuracy and performance. We can view the simulation parameters through model, model parameters, and simulation parameters. The global simulation parameters will be populated in the object property window. It is not recommended to edit any of these parameters unless you absolutely have to. In this particular workshop, we are able to update the minimum number of computational nodes individually for each of the channel links without changing any of the parameters in this window. We're going to use a predefined SQL to run and change the minimum number of computational nodes for each of our channels within our network. In our imported RAS network, we only have four channels. If we had many, an SQL would be great for automating this process. So we can see from our transportable, we have an SQL called channel minimum number of computational nodes. To view the SQL, we're going to right click and select open. We can see here in the editor that this is set to update our minimum computational nodes fields for our channels based on the slopes of our channels. If we go and inspect one of the channels in a properties window, we can see that they have five minimum computational nodes. To bring on our SQL, we just drag it onto the GeoPlan. Now let's inspect one of the channels again, and we can see the minimum computational nodes have been updated. We're going to validate, and then commit the changes to our master database. and select OK. Now we're going to set up our run object. To do this, we right click on our model group, go to new InfoWorks and run. We're going to maximize our run window. We're going to give our run the title industrial development run. And we're going to select both our industrial and raft storms by holding the control key. And we're going to drag that into the gray space of our run window. This will auto populate the required fields. We're going to tick on allow reruns using updated network. This means that any changes we make to the network, we can update the run to the latest and it will overwrite our simulation results. We're going to change our maximum time step to one second. We're going to change our results time step multiplier to 60. This will mean that the results are printed at every minute of the simulation. And because we're running one hour storms, we're going to run the simulation for 120 minutes. Once we've populated those fields, we're going to run the simulations. This will bring up the schedule job window. Here we can choose to run on this computer or if we're uh, linked into a network of other simulation machines, we can choose which of them to run the simulations on. We can also schedule the simulation to run at a later time, say for example, when we finished work. We're going to keep it on this computer and run the simulation now. 
let's click OK. In the job control window, we'll be able to see the progress of the simulations. And we can also see by opening up the run object. Once the simulations have successfully completed, they will be coded green. Any simulations that failed will be coded red, or simulations that have finished with warnings will be coded yellow. Now we can see that all the simulations have finished. We can begin to inspect the results. There are a large number of tools in ICM to assist the user in reviewing the results. Firstly, we're going to look at summary results and text output files. Then we're going to open up the time varying results and explore the different methods of interrogation, including setting up a custom graph. Now we're going to right click on one of the simulation icons and go open as. Here we can see a few options as to how we can view some of the results. First one we're going to look at is PRN summary results. So select OK and this will bring up a new window for our summary results. This is used to get an overview of the network results containing maximum results for nodes and links. Here we can see our node results and further down are our links. Now we go back, open as, and we're going to look at our log results. Select OK. Our log results are used to summarize the input data and the performance of the simulation. It will contain any error or warning messages that occur throughout the simulation, as well as summary of the model run times. We can see the parameters of our run control. It's showing us the license number that was used to run the simulation and also gives us an overview of the runtime. So we're going to close out those two windows. Just on top of the log file, should any simulation file, then this will be the first place to come to. This will allow you to analyze the failed simulation for any problems. If you want to turn on more detailed log files, then we can go into the run object, scroll down to diagnostics and tick on the time step log. This will output a more detailed log file that allows you to pinpoint where the simulation may have failed or which object is causing the simulation to fail. Now we're going to look at opening the results manager to do this, we right click on the RAS tutorial model group and open results manager. This will open up a new window giving information on the simulation IDs, the run titles, which simulations were used, as well as the date that they were run, which machine and which user, and also gives us an indication on the size of the files if we wanted to rerun. To inspect any of the results in the GeoPlan, we can either double click on the object or we can drag the run object or the simulation object into the GeoPlan. We're going to inspect the first storm, so we're going to double click to open. We can see that this opens with the default properties for our GeoPlan. If we want, we can bring on the theme in our transportable to color code it. Uh, we can also bring on our ground model and our aerial image. You can see a replay bar up the top left hand corner of the GeoPlan. This will indicate the results time steps as we play through on the replay toolbar. We can pause and we can skip through the time steps as well as show the maximum results. We can also view the results properties in the properties window as we're playing through. To do this, we double click to bring up the properties window 
And here we can see the maxima for, that is currently shown for our network. We can start replaying through and it will show the time step. It will show our time varying results for our subcatchment as well as general simulation parameters. We're going to pause that. We can also view time varying results for other objects such as our channels and our nodes. We are going to look at using the graphs, grids and themes to view our results. For graphing, we use the graph pick tool or we can graph selected objects. We are going to look at using the graph pick tool for subcatchment C10. Once we have our graph window up, we want to select runoff and total outflow. We can do this by selecting the control key and selecting both of those options. Press OK and this will bring up our new graph window. From here we can see our total outflow curve highlighted in red as well as our runoff volume curve highlighted in green. We can go into properties, turn on auto label traces and this will give us the value at the current time step. If we play through the red bar will move along the graph and give us the results for the specific time step. We can also create some custom graphs by going to results, custom graphs and simulation per page report. Here we're going to bring on our simulation results and from the transportable we're going to select the subcatchment selection list. In layout we're going to highlight all of the subcatchments and we're going to choose the runoff. We can save this as a new custom graph into our model group. So select the RAS tutorial model group and enter subcatchment runoff. Select save and then we can graph the results. Because of the small screen it looks a bit clustered so we're going to take off some of the tables and title block. Here we can see the flashy hydrographs which are representing the runoff from our impervious surfaces as well as the runoff for our pervious surfaces. And we can cycle through each of the storms using the green arrow tool. We should have 10 storms in total. We'll close the window by closing the tabs. We can also view the results using the result grid windows. This will tabulate the result information for all the individual objects. To open up the result grid windows, we can come to the icons in the toolbar here or we can go to window, grid windows and select any of the result windows. We're going to look at a new subcatchment result window. Here we can see all the subcatchment IDs that we have in our model and we can play through the results. We'll notice that the columns highlighted in green are our time varying results and the columns highlighted in black are our maxima. We can also use the properties and themes in the GeoPlan to help display some of the results. So to do that, we right click in the GeoPlan, go back to properties and themes, and we're going to click on edit for channel. We're going to create some sub themes. Firstly, we're going to enable our downstream velocity theme by selecting the enable disable button and then we're going to create a new sub theme 
which will represent our flows through the channel. So we use the new add new icon. We're going to use the drop down in field and we're going to find upstream flow. Select and this will auto populate the name. We're going to up the value count to five and we're going to turn on line width. We're going to ensure that we toggle all so we can define the flow values. We're going to use 0, 5, 10, and 15. And we're going to change the thickness. So once we have created that, we select Apply and OK. Lastly, we're going to turn on some custom labels for our channels to show the upstream flow graphically on our GeoPlan. So to do this, we're going to click on Auto Labels and Tooltips. We're going to check the user box and set. We're going to keep our object type as channel or choose channel if it's not already done so. And in the field, we're going to navigate to upstream flow. insert the field and select OK. From here we can also choose this or change the size of the values. I'm going to change 12 and then we're going to go back to layers and themes and turn on auto labels for our channel. Once we've done that we're going to save this as a new theme to our model group so save database to object, press OK, and under our RAFS tutorial, we're going to name this RAFS Sim Results. And press save, OK, and OK. Now if we go back to the start of our simulation, we can play through And we can see some of the results graphically in our GeoPlan. We can see as the flows are getting larger through our channels, they are changing colour. We can also see the flow value represented by our new labels. We can also see the velocities through the channel graphically through our, the number of arrows represented. Lastly, we're going to look at exporting the results. So we're going to export our subcatchment hydrographs to a CSV. To do this, we go to Results, CSV Export. We're going to drag on our simulation for our first storm. And we're going to select the units, make sure that our time step is showing all the results for each time step instead of the minimum or maximum. And under the subcatchment tab, we're going to make sure that we have runoff. We're going to choose a suitable location for our CSV to be exported to. And then OK. If we want to view the export, we go back to our exports and we can open up the CSV file. This gives us the hydrographs results for each of our subcatchments at the time steps that we've recorded.